Welcome to the Narrowboat that James built. Welcome to Project 58. Thanks for watching. This boat is here at PNS Marine in Watford getting some vital works done. The Vetus Marine diesel engine needs to be taken out the boat and the engine bay all stripped. And inside the boat, well, it needs to be cleared out entirely, stripped back and basically started again. Apart from the mammoth task that lies ahead of me inside the boat, outside is also quite a big one. The engine bay needs to be sorted out and the engine taken out and reconditioned. This Vetus 42 has been sitting underwater in battery acid and water for quite some time. Luckily, she turns. So with the engine out of the boat, I need to seriously crack on with the inside and the engine bay. So please join me as I transform this narrowboat into a lovely, comfortable home. Right, now I need to draw my attention back to this. Obviously, the floor goes in first, low walls go in afterwards. So the lower walls are sitting on top of the floor. So I need to basically cut it out and then put it back. I'm not going to be able to put it back as one sheet. So ideally, I'm going to look to put it back as two. A little bit like this one there is a seam there you can see so it sort of depends on where there's any kind of battens or joists or struts or anything like that ribs to hold it to let's find out let's cut this thing open maybe not quite as simple as i thought so from further investigation that edge there is this board so it goes from there to there and kind of a fifth of the way through it is that bulkhead. Now this is in need of some repair. That bit there is in need of a bit of repair. This is one solid piece. Don't know if it's all the way up to there or if it stops there or something. That's all a bit in need of some love, isn't it? I mean, blimey. There are some people who are watching that who haven't got a clue what that is. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to get to this easily with my arm kind of going around the back of that to get that out and make that half decent. This is where the new stove's gonna be. So that wall's all gonna have to come down anyway because that's gonna need fireproofing. Um, I'm now thinking that that bulkhead, whoa, might need to come down. Certainly the lower part. I'm still not gonna get the board out in fairness. That doesn't really help me there because it's still going to be under those walls and I'm not going to take the walls out. <sighs> I'm having a cup of coffee and I'm going to think about this. Right, I started taking some of the trim off this. I think I've made up my mind. This boat's just too good to kind of settle for some shit bulkhead with all that rubbish on it. So, and there's no decent way of mounting that under there. So basically whatever I do here can't have any kind of weight to it. But even if I didn't have any weight there, just knowing that is just not right. This bit of floor behind here is also wet or kind of as crappy as that. So it's gonna kind of, slowly turn into this there that's where the water pump is and stuff i mean it's not going to get to the tank because that's sitting on joists so that's a separate thing it's, i'm not worried about that but yeah it's just it's got to be done isn't it and a lot of this timber around here is all gone around the door frame so i think there's only one thing for it and that is to take the wall out. Well, how the hell do I do this now? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's in two separate parts. So upper wall there might be able to stay. Once I take that lower wall out there, I might be able to access that switch. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. polystyrene there, there's the water pump, all right, right, <coughs> now that's the uh, Let's get them out of there. I didn't think I'd be doing anything like this, but alas, I am. Um, I'm now thinking I'm gonna have to take off the upper walls. Firstly, well, there's cables. I'm pretty sure that cable there goes up and down to there. Uh, what else have I discovered? I've discovered the Arctic blue ends there. And another one ends there. So it, was, uh, it wasn't a ring main, it was just kind of going around the boat. It goes underneath the gunnel, so I can get, I can get to it. So that's quite good, it's just underneath there. These two blue cables here, which are not very nice, feed that switch. So that is some kind of lighting thing, goes all the way down there, but you don't need a switch like that on a boat these days. But yeah, uh, there's the bleeder for the tank. Uh, tank looks actually in pretty good order, to be honest. Um, but now I need to, oh, well, I was just going to do the floor. Now I'm kind of doing all this stuff as well. Um, I might as well carry on and get those two bits out. There's a few bits of cabling and stuff like that. Um, and it can all be put together better now, I guess. So now's the chance. Let's crack on. Okay, that's the port side upper wall down. Came off pretty easily. Only one screw holding it in, a couple nails. So this all looks okay. You can see a gap there between the battening and the door. So that might need to be looked at. Obviously it's just got solid timber doors on this. I quite like having steel doors with a timber inlay and windows. 
Not to say I'm going to make this boat identical to all the bits and pieces that Rob's got on his, but those are the doors to have on a boat like this. So I'm going to see if our friend Kev Kite can make me up a pair of doors. Otherwise, I'll have to go to a normal steel fabricator. Right. I didn't pose too much of a problem. Right, there we go. There's that one off. Where does that thing go now? Right, that's lighting. That is going through the ceiling. That one there is going straight out into. Oh, there's a TV point on the front of the boat. I right, can get rid of that. All this black stuff here is just where the air's coming in. Um, you know when you've got a black rim on the edge of a light coloured carpet? It's the same thing, it's just air coming in and discolours it. Right. Right, this is all bloody hell. I know everyone's harped on about me not taking the TNG down off the ceiling, and I know what you. I, I know your point. Even the fact that it's covered in holes from all of this stuff, but there's a lot of cabling behind here, and I'm gonna need to access it. And there's no sodding lights up up here. The lights stop there. Things like this, which is just ghastly. But they're powered up. So there's a bloody stonking hole in the roof there. There's really questionable connections. That's my worry. You know, you do all this and it all goes. Right, I'll keep that for the time being. I'm not going to waste my time with it, but I've got to do something with this TNG. Right. Next up, let's get these cables back. Right, I've discovered a joystick running across that way. So I'm assuming there's another one running down there. So just kind of going about excavating this and a load of rusty crap from down in there. Hmm, okay, let's crack on. The reason I'm doing it with the plunge tool on the malt tool is because I can gauge the depth then, so I'm not going through the joist like I did on that one there, even though I am using this. Yeah, I thought there was a joist down there. Okay. It's all right because once I tidy that up, there's enough for it to rest on. There we go. Base plate seems all right. I mean, it's covered in rust, but aren't they all? It's not too bad. One. 
one day I might own a narrow boat and not spend time looking at the bloody ballast base plate. Right, well, uh, I think I'm going to probably leave that for the moment now um, because my diesel man has just turned up. So he is here to do two things. He's here to clean out the diesel um, and to well, have a look at it firstly and then kind of clean it um, through a series of filters. And that process is called polishing. Um, and the other thing he's going to do is clean the actual diesel tank. Not fully, obviously, you can't get into it, but get out any of the crud and any of the crap that might be in there. So, um, what is it? There's a few hundred litres of diesel in there. So, this is like a couple hundred quid's worth of service, but it's cheaper doing it this way than it is to chuck out the diesel and just buy some more stuff because then basically I'm putting in clean diesel into a dirty tank. So, this way I'm going to get pretty clean diesel in a pretty clean tank. Happy days. Let's go check out what he's doing. Trying to get it going to go clean. This is the, the bad stuff that they've taken out. Yeah. This is a bit crap. And now look, you can see the colours changed. Oh, I see, yeah. So you've had all this crap in the bottom of the tank made with water. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with metal filter. Yep. And then I'm going to a 30 micron and a 10 and a 2 micron. Okay. So both at the moment, I'm just cleaning out the bottom of the tank. Right, okay. Yeah, because there's no point in cleaning the bottom of the tank. No. This is crap. Um, so the first one I took was, that's, that's the state of your diesel to start with. As you can see, it's not. Yeah, okay, that's pretty bad. Yeah, and you can see that it's slash and stuff. Yeah. So I've removed that. So now look, you're starting to get better diesel. Okay. Right. So I'm going to clean all this out now. All this crap. So is that diesel bug or is that just crap from the tank? Is, from the tank. Crap from the tank and diesel bug. So diesel bug is water in the diesel. diesel and crap yeah. from the tank is just crap from the tank. Yeah. yeah. Well, the diesel bug is like the water. Yeah. Will get in condensation. The tank from condensation. Yeah. And then bacteria will grow in that. Okay. So you end up with living organisms. But what we've got, we've got some chemical stuff to kill all that after we've after we've uh, cleaned the cool. process. Um, Diesel biocide. Biocide, yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty lethal, and that'll kill it. Okay. But what I don't want to waste it by yeah. lifting up crap. Gotcha. From the tank. So as you can see, we're starting now to get cleaner diesel. Yeah. Right. So now that's worth washing that up. Okay. Yeah, and is that the process called loads. polishing? That's polishing, yeah. Okay. And but is that what you're going to do today? Yeah, we're polishing it and we're cleaning it as much as we can of the tank. Smash Obviously it. can't clean the whole tank. No, you can't scrub it's it. It's impossible. No, but we can get the crap out of it. This will work as a sort of jet washer. So now I'm going to put this pipe back in the tank yeah. and try and spray with what comes out, goes through, and then back into the tank. I got you, okay. Yeah. So just cycles so round and round, basically. Cycles round and round. And these filters in here at the moment are metal filters. Yeah, and then I'm you start change, change, change the filters soon. Filters. Okay, you start going through the microns. Through the whole process. Fantastic. It's not as worse, I've seen worse. I've seen an awful lot better. <laughs> Now I'm putting that in. To the tank, and we're going to start spinning it up again. There we go. Good catch. How long does this process take for the whole tank? This might, this might take a few hours, might take three hours. Really? Yeah, because it's quite bad. Yeah. And also, sort the tank up at the same time. It's amazing what's going on there. Yeah. The other interesting thing I've discovered is the water tank 
underneath the bow here is not stainless steel it's plastic so that's quite good if ever it needs to come out the slide it out and i can actually give it a bit of movement now so and it's full of water so tap is off so that's all come out of the tank that's all that's all come out of the tank there's more there's, there's come out of the tank that's just what's the residue on the filters we'll have a look in a second see what it looks like now Should be very good, quite clean. You can see that's yeah. bits in there as well. Not bad, but you know. Coming out of the tank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is a bit of grime in the bottom there, isn't there? Mm. Right, I've got to give a massive thanks to Joe. Uh, he was the diesel man that was here today. Uh, he spent hours here, he lives on a narrow boat. He's such a lovely guy. So if you need your diesel cleaning or polishing as it's called and your tank sorting out, anything like that, if you've got diesel bug, uh, he is your man. So Joe Hone is his name. The phone number is on the screen and it's in the details below. Cheers, Joe. Okay, there we have it. So, I have a feeling there was a stove here once. But the condition looks okay. Looking down here. I've turned the light on so you're gonna see a load of dust. And rust. I mean, it's nothing, to be honest. It really is nothing. The important thing is that with rust like this on the inside, I mean, boats corrode from the inside. They rust away from the inside, not the out. But if that was wet rust, then the stuff underneath there is still wet. But this is kind of historic rust. I well, know it's not exactly a positive thing, but unlike the engine bay, which was kind of active rust, this is not so. But having said that, there's still quite a bit. So, not too serious though. The other thing that's a bit weird is that the water tank is on an angle. See, it's on a batten there and not there. It's fallen down. And that board that it's on is in a bad way. And my worry there is that it could get worse. So, I'm going to have a little think about what to do there. It might be a case of just jack emptying it, jacking it up and kind of putting some brace back in there. But it needs to be emptied, that's for sure. And then probably cleaned out. But uh, I'm glad that this is all up. And in terms of putting it back, it's not going to be a problem at all because there's enough braces there and joists for me to put it all to so happy days right diesel man is finishing uh it's gone quite well it's been there for hours doing all that so uh that would be good um i've got to go to the timber yard and get myself a floor and then uh tomorrow i've got to spend another day in the engine bay um hopefully by then it'll have all air dried and then i've got to grind back as much as i can with wire brushes and stuff like that get that as good as it can be uh, I think we've got some bits and pieces of the engine coming tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, so yeah, that's going to be uh, alternator, starter motor, uh, 
drive plate and a couple other bits i think so yeah, it's all taking shape once all that stuff is back on then i can uh clean up the engine and then paint it which is a job i am really really looking forward to doing um but uh there is still so much big heavy dirty stuff to do on this boat before i get put back onto the canal which might be a couple of weeks so so lots to do still thanks for watching take care bye bye